Hi there, welcome to Design Spark, and today we're going to be talking about switches. I've got Dave from APEM. Uh, hi, Dave, do you want to say hello to Design Spark? Yeah, hello there. So I'm Dave uh, Flaherty from APEM. I'm the business development manager for our high performance uh, switches and components, focusing mostly on the defense and harsh environments kind of industries. Fantastic. Well, thanks for joining us today, Dave. I really do appreciate it. it it's strange, though, isn't it? Because um, I was thinking about this interview this morning and I'm, I'm thinking the switch, simple concept, but we rely on it terribly. Um, you know, we, we put a lot of faith and trust in switches working time and time again. So I'm really interested just to find out a little bit more about switches in general, but particularly from your side, high performance switches. So can you just tell me a little bit more about maybe the standards that high performance switches actually meet? Yeah, so I think first of all, to, to kind of kick off, as a as a European manufacturer, we kind of conform to all Russian reach compliances, um, ISO 9001 and ISO 14001, which essentially means what we make uh, meets all the relevant criteria and legal standards in terms of quality and environmental kind of um, requirements as well. So um, we have lots of different ranges going through from commercial um, switches, um, but what we'll focus on today is the high performance ones. They are built differently, um, different concepts to how they're manufactured and how they're designed. Um, we have our X778 series, which is the highest performance part we make that has three different CECC approvals and um, two mil DTL approvals. Um, which essentially is a European and global recognition um, to, to, to prove that it will work in all harsh environments mm. and is proven to the last. Fantastic. And in terms of the, the environmental performance and the, the mechanical conditions, what is it that these makes these switches stand out? What is it that they can withstand which, which general purpose switches couldn't? So the important things really for these switches um, is the, the really is focusing on the harsh environment. So they are fully sealed IP65 all the way through to IP69, depending on variants. Um, they withstand shock and vibration, salt spray, humidity. Um, they really are designed to work in any environment. Now we do have, um, so obviously you've got your standard switch there. Um, APEM sealing boots as well to, to stop any further dirt or, you know, water ingress entering through the, the bush. Um, it prevents freezing, you know, in, in really cold temperatures. So the switches are designed to last as, as standard, but then you do have that extra protection as well, if needed. Yeah. And I guess um, in terms of those environmental conditions, they can be pretty substantial from one extreme to the other. You were talking there about frozen. And again, obviously yes. on the the side of, of, of heat as well they do have to actually stand up and be counted so to speak so, and like i said at the beginning yes. they're not just such a, a simple component when you you start to look at the technicality of of how they're they're made and what they are actually going to withstand so just in terms of configurations um what configurations are, are we we looking at that are available in the different series so yeah, the, if you start with the 12,000X778 series, it's available in latching and momentary function um, from single pole all the way through to four pole. Um, and it can be a two or three position switch. Now those two or three positions um, can be made up of um, any configuration, essentially. So you can have momentary mm -hmm. off, you can have on, 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 off momentary. You really can have whatever the application requires. It also has um, an additional option of a locking lever. So we do three different ones as standard. So you can see here, the switch can be actuated that way, but then it can't be moved back out of position without uh, lifting to, uh, to return it to that side. Um, we do have the two um, locked in two sides. So it, it has to be moved, lifted to move from either side. And then the last, well, sorry, the, the other main uh, option on these is three positions. So it's locked in all three positions. So locked in center and then locked on um, either extremity as well. So that prevents any accidental operation um, when you, you need to be sure that the switch is only used once when it is needed. Um, and again, we, we have a switch guard. So this is a further measure to stop any accidental operation so that can be um 
that can only be used when it really is intended to be used. There's no accidental operation. And for further security, you can thread that as well with a wire to, mm -hmm. um, to you have to cut it before it's used. So um, there's lots of different options in the, the VMSG series, um, which it can either be um, locked into position there, or it can be once that's returned to, to the um, closed position, it can return the, the lever as well, depending on what configuration you need. So essentially, there is no limitation to the configurations. Um, it, it depends what the application demands. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, lots of variance there to make the, the right really selections. Is, yes. Yeah. Um, and additionally, we also have the push button version of the X778. So this is our 13,000 series. Again, it meets all the same standards that the 12,000 series does. Um, it's part of the MPI. Sorry. It's part of the new... Um, range that will be available in RS in the coming weeks. Um, so you do have several different variants available. So you have different actuator heights. It gives a different haptic feedback um, to the to the operator. And again, you can have it available in different color actuators. And additionally, you can also have it in a threaded actuator where the either end user can um, put their own actuator on that. Um, which again can look in any different shape, size, and color. So it gives a customization to the to the end user as well. We do have a complementary range of LEDs as well. So again, these fall into the high performance aspects for APEM. Mm -hmm. uh, again, they are rear mounts, so it gives the user the option to pre-wire them with the switches. And again, they just install them into the panel. These are available in lots of different LED colors, so red, green, blue, white, orange, um, any color that the customer really needs. And again, you can have a different range of uh, voltage, so a different resistor is fit into the back. Um, depending on the, the application. And then again, the back is fully sealed epoxy. So these are all IP65 um, sealed. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Oh. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to choose from there and those configurations. Um, so yeah, go to the, the RS website and, and check them out. Absolutely. Thanks for that, Dave. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the other thing I just want to bring out about high performance switches as opposed to general purpose um just tell tell the, the viewers exactly about you know what are the kind of levels of performance that they can expect with high performance um what what is that kind of benefit that they can gain from that so they you touched on it earlier the one of the main things is the extreme conditions especially the temperature so when you're looking at high performance applications so top end mode sport formula one for example the temperatures can get very, very hot. Mm -hmm. um, but then also when you're talking about vehicles that may be in the in the fields, you know, kind of um, mine clearing equipment, that sort of stuff, temperatures can also get very, very cold. So they are proven to withstand minus 40 Celsius to plus 85, which is almost a it's prerequisite for the kind of defense industry. Um, our high performance switches are all designed to, to that specification, whereas commercial grade switches just wouldn't withstand those temperatures. Yeah. Um, the other the other main one is the, the number of life cycles. So you are guaranteed um, a minimum of 150,000 cycles on the switches and depending on configuration that can change um, and also depending on the load going through the switch. But the number of cycles on these um, is really, really critical to make sure that once you press that button, even if it's not been used for 10 years, you are guaranteed to still get the outcome um, that you need from, from pushing that button. Um, the other key benefit on these is the, the compact design. So if you look at our standard, um, look, it's still a high, high performance switch, but um, the in comparison, the, the switch there saves a lot of space in the application. It still does the same job. Um, but the, the footprint behind that is, is designed to a really compact kind of uh, design. So you will save a lot of space and really save a lot of weight as well. They the, the weigh next to nothing. So when you're looking at high performance automotive, that's very important that, you know, yeah. the weight saving on that is it can, you know, make all the difference. Um, yeah, I think there's, there's there's quite a few points there that you, you, you've pulled out. Um, the one that interests me was when you said about the the switch maybe not being used for a couple of years and you expect it to then actually function as 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 it should. In terms of the 
the industrial applications, we're really looking at those demanding applications uh, within industrial automation, the automotive um, vehicle uh, applications as well. Now, I just want to, you were talking about earlier about environmental and mechanical conditions, but in terms of things like when it comes to EMI and um, RFI shielding, what is it that they measure up against? You know, tell me a little bit more about how they they work in this environment or take into consideration that aspect. Yeah, so when you talk about EMI and RFI shielding, that really only applies to the um, joystick ranges, so our TS range of joysticks, which you would find on a hand controller, you know, for, for remotely operating a, a vehicle or, you know, something along those lines. They are fully tested EMC immunity level and, and EMC emissions as well. Um, and that's both of those two EN6100. Um, the um, the components themselves, they, they wouldn't be shielded. It wouldn't apply to the, the components. They would be installed into a panel or a box built by our customer and then shielded. But there's never any there's never any concern about them passing a meeting requirement. So it wouldn't be us that did the, the testing on that. But they are designed to meet other requirements that, that the customer needs. Dave, in, in terms of operation what what characteristics would you say that um the high performance ranges exhibit above those general purpose switches so this is really to do with the materials used in the the makeup of the switch um so where a commercial switch is built um to be you know used in the thousands tens of thousands sometimes the cost needs to be really low on that to be used um uh, more cost effective materials with the X778 series, it's um, it's all to do with the materials and the quality of those. Um, so the the contacts, for example, are a um, single piece um, gold plated silver nickel alloy. Um, the the shell of the the switch is a double um, shelled epoxy sealed um, for additional mechanical strength and electrical insulation. Um, the toggles uh, the leaves on the toggle switches all have a pin through there um, which again is then epoxy sealed into it and that stops any kind of uh, force um, coming from that direction damaging the internal mechanism of the switch so it's it's really to do with the materials and the 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 small details that can really make a difference where there's lots of different um, or additional kind of um specifications to this which completely set it apart to, to commercial grade switches so the high performance is in summary it's it's to do with materials but it's also the the small details in the design which mean that like i said earlier if it's not used for 10 years you can still use it and you will know you will mm -hmm. know that that will work um and so that's really the characteristics the they do have um an additional uh, feature where the, the manufactured with a D flat on the bush. Um, so it prevents um, the switch being the rotating in the panel, whereas mm -hmm. a commercial grade switch would use a keyway. Um, and again, that could be twist and it could turn in the panel. The switch would be in the wrong orientation. So it's again, it's a small detail, but it's one that makes a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, um... There's, there's probably a few analogies to, to be made here. Um, so, for example, I play guitar and I have some nice expensive guitars, um, but I see a lot of guitar players who, who will do this. They will spend a lot of money on their, their instrument, but then not necessarily invest in the strings um, and maybe, you know, purchase a, a cheaper set of strings rather than a quality pair. And I just see that as a false economy. So, you know, what you were talking about there in terms of the, the characteristics and the way that the products that are made manufactured uh, the operational lifespan etc i just think it's it's kind of like you know you're demonstrating that with high performance switches that you're you're actually investing rather than you know just making a purchase to do a process for example i just want to to know your your thoughts on that if you would like to sum that up yeah, absolutely. And you're right with saying if you're spending a lot of money on the application itself, you need to know that the, the components within there are going to be suitable and um, guarantees that they, they will perform to the level of the application. So so going back to motorsport, you, you're talking hundreds of thousands of pounds sometimes on the vehicles, maybe even millions of pounds 
So for that, you need to know that the components in that vehicle are going to last for the conditions that you know that yeah. you're paying all that money to, to guarantee. Fantastic, Dave. I've really enjoyed this discussion on on switches. I've learned so much just talking um the manufacturer the the characteristics in terms of the materials that are used and some of those nice little design uh details that you went into so um yeah i hope we can have you on design spark again sometime soon yeah no it's been a pleasure thank you very much